Hi all, it's Jason here from the JLNT Railway on the MRH forums and um, today what I'm going to be doing is um, just doing a quick video how to on how I've set up the wiring blocks as part of the um, top deck power district on our layout using um, my short management devices so what we'll do is we'll get started and I'll start off now by just giving you a quick overview of the actual wiring block area and how it relates to the intermodal terminal and where it starts, where it finishes and um, what we're going to be doing. So we'll just start off down here at our turnout down here which is a number 7 turnout and this is the actual start of the wiring block um, and if you have a close look at this turnout this is actually a couple of um, Code 83 Pico insulated rail joiners so that's the start of the wiring box that it isolates this um, series of two sidings from the main and obviously the main is this one here and here's the start of the sidings off the number 7 turnout that runs into two sidings that split and here is just the uh, insulated rail joiners and then branches off into the two the two um, sidings that form the sidings for the intermodal terminal which is running through here coming up to um, a series of number eight turnouts and you'll note this little mark that I've marked here this is actually the half train length for the intermodal train so the total train length is 3.3 um, meters which is roughly around about 10 feet um, so this is the half length so what will basically happen is I'll pull a fully loaded train up into here and at this point here you can actually see there's a series of insulated rail joiners which would be one of the wiring blocks, so the whole intermodal yard is going to be split into two wiring blocks and then basically from this point onward the train will be broken in half one end of the, of the double siding, that's one end of the wiring block and then the other end is basically going to be up here and you can actually see where I've already removed the, um, the normal rail joiners and I'm going to be installing um, a couple of these which once again are just the Pico insulated rail joiners. So they'll be going in there. So um, yeah, what we'll do is uh, we'll get started and we'll continue on. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just going to install these last two insulated rail joiners onto this series of track. And um, basically what I've done, I've just lifted up the flex track here and just pulled pins out, basically push them back home, spin the track back a bit, lining up the insulated rail joiners, making sure that they're right on the rail, and then just basically checking um, checking the alignment. Um, myself, I don't use anything special other than a just a pair of um, cheap $2 pliers to put track pins down. <laughs> Okay, so what we'll do is we just continue on now, and um, this is the wire that I'm actually using for my track feeders. Um, it's roughly around about a 22 or a 20 gauge wire. It actually hasn't got it on the label, but it's actually detonator wire. You can pick it up on the label there. One side has got a red stripe down it, which I'm using for the, the positive side, and then the other side's just all, all white. Um, so yeah, that's it there. So what we'll do now is we'll just go underneath the layout. Well, that's the track feeder just dropping down underneath the deck there, through the plywood. Basically runs along underneath the plywood, then comes across to this section here, which is a bit of a take on Joe's third bus wire. Um, I've adapted it a little bit differently, whereas I actually run the positive and the negative to just a smaller terminal here. Um, and as you can see, I've just positioned the wires there, ready to be hooked up with a little bit extra just in case um, and there's also another track feeder off the siding as well um, so that's the two that'll go to that section there um, so as I said just so I'm not running the feeders over over roughly 600 mil or around about two feet this is just basically an extension if you follow along here that runs through the deck supports through there back up underneath here through this section 
comes out here along underneath and then into this terminal block which I don't know if you can pick up it's actually um, substantially bigger than the last one so there's the terminated ends there ready to hook into this bypass here so you'll see there's the, the short management device for the intermodal section um, for one of the wiring blocks so there'll be two wiring blocks on the whole intermodal um, sidings and unloading racks so all I've basically done with this terminal block is just created um, two loops where it comes out of the short management device and into the second block and basically these just hook into here and then what that allows me to do is just run um, a bigger feeder the distance along so for a little bit longer distances up to here so what we'll do now is we'll um, I'll put a couple more feeders in for that section I'll get them ready and then um, we'll solder some track feeders to some of the track work Okay, so the next part of um, installing the feeders, as you can see, all the feeders are now through um, through the cork. Um, all the cable ends have now been stripped. So the series of this um, feeders on that turnout there. Uh, another set there. Moving along, swapping over to the other siding of the intermodal tunnel. One more set there, and spinning around. Lastly, one last set there and one there just before the end of the um, the wiring block with the insulated uh, joiners on the track um, I'm using the principle of um, a track feeder for every piece of track so every piece of track every turnout has its own feeder um, it's just a section of cork that I've just laid um, just so I can actually get those track feeders here in place. So I've just laid this section of cork down here, which is the second of the, the second unloading siding for the short strip on the intermode terminal there. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and um, wire a couple of feeders on. And I'll just show you how I do that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, solder up a couple of track feeders. Uh, these two here, the ones we're going to solder up. Um, as you can see, what I've done is I've bent the ends back on a 90 degree. So it'll 90 degree bend there, and there's a 45 degree back in towards the actual rail itself. And um, I just put a slight bend in the actual track feeders too. And then what that does is as I pull them down through, they'll actually lock into the back side of the rails. Um, I solder my feeders on the backs, that way they're near impossible to actually see from the front fascia side. So what we'll do is we'll um, just get into doing some soldering. Uh, one of the things I do first off before I actually put my solder is I actually just put um, a bit of um, rosin flux on just with a dispenser pin. Um, obviously this just helps the solder take up in that, that little section. I'm going to solder just in case there's any dirt on or something like that. Usually give it a clean with a um, a little um, wire brush first. So as you can see, I'm just from underneath the deck. I'm just pulling that that back feeder through, just enough so it just drops into the back of the rail there. You see it sits down there nicely now. Just put those couple of bends in. So then we'll uh, drop some drop some heat on here. Usually with this um, soldering iron, it's just a 25 watt one. Um, usually only takes about 10 to 15 seconds of heat. Drop a couple of dabs in there. Just needs a couple more seconds. And that seems to be taken now. So once I've got a couple of dabs in there, what I'll do is I'll just grab the actual track feeder from underneath. Make sure it's staying down. Wait for the solder to take up. And release it and just check it, make sure. Um, this section of track, the actual um, the plastic ties aren't that close to the actual feeders where I'm soldering. But generally what I'll do is if I need to put um, some sort of heat sink, I just use um, these, which are basically um, just a couple of spring-loaded tweezers um, out of the Woodland Scenic Tree starter kit. 
And what I do is I just generally put them on the rail, just a pair, and then um, slide them up towards any of the feeders I'm just leaving there. And they're pretty good heat sinks. I've sold it a lot closer than this to plastic tyres before, and I've never had any issues with them melting. Even the spike head details still there and still quite crisp. Um, and that's from a lesson learnt when I first tried soldering it and melted a few ties. Once again, just a couple of dabs. Grab the feeder from underneath. Just make sure the solder and the feeder's in the right position. It's not actually going to impede in any way the flanges of the rolling stock and the locomotives. Just wait a couple of seconds so that sets up. And uh, that's it. So that's the series of uh, track feeders done. So there's the, the two here. And there's another two further up that I've just done. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll um, I'll solder the rest of these feeders in for this wiring block and then um, we'll jump underneath the deck and I'll show you how I'll wire it all up to the short management device. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, finish off the last little bit of wiring up the track feeders here for the, um, the first of the wiring box for the intermodal terminal. So as you can see, I've already put a couple of um, track feeders in to the small terminal block, which is um, basically just an extension like a bus wire. So what we'll do now is we'll just um, we'll put this last track feeder in, and all I do is I start off with um, just basically cutting down the, the centre in between the two cables, pulling the two halves apart, so that just end up with a fork. And then um, basically strip off um, probably about a quarter of an inch of cable, which as you can see, strippers do that quite well. It saves me a lot of time since I bought these things. Okay, and there's the two ends stripped off, and then basically they end up being the two ends that go in. So all we then do is um, just ensure that um, putting the, the red the red striped white cable into the red positive. Try and keep only oh, about six feeders into one terminal block. If I have to put any more than six, generally what I'll do is I'll um, I'll actually run a second strip on the terminal block itself. What I'll do just to finish off the the whole wiring job is I'll actually put some um, some cable ties just around the common wiring. So by common I mean that all these feeders are actually all on the one wiring block. And that way if I ever have to track down any faults or redo any wiring, I know which um, which block of wires or which group of wires to start looking at. Eventually what I'll end up doing is I will label, label all these, these groups. So uh, that's it. So all the wiring's done. Um, that's all the track feeders connected. For that section, as you can see, we're ready to go, and that uh, that concludes series number one of the JLNT video how tos. And um, as I said, if um, people think these are good and get some value out of them, then we'll keep on doing them. As we keep building the layout, I'll keep doing more how to videos on a lot of different stuff. So that's it, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the MRH forums.